Hello, everyone. Hello, Dr. Michael Lightman. Hello. And we're talking about the post-coronavirus era. And this is our third meeting. And we're going to talk about the general involvement, development of the desire. On this course, we're going to go over the necessary concepts that a person needs in order to get along in the next world. The next world, by this we mean our world, only in our next state. And therefore, on our first meetings, we talked about how nature is all united, how man is, how man depends on nature, how he depends on society. And today we're going to talk about the evolvement of our desires, what characterizes our ego. And I'd like to start with a short expo and question. So on the one hand, in our world, there is this tendency toward globalization, connection, nature is pushing us toward that. It's clear to everyone. On the other hand, man's inner nature resists this, is against it. We feel that we're alienated toward one another and there is a kind of conflict. And the question coming from our viewers is that today, nature, through the coronavirus, is separating us. We're all in quarantine and taking into consideration our inner substance, we're supposed to enjoy this. Finally, we're on our own, alone. Everyone wants to be an individual in and of himself. Everything is calm, tranquil. On the other hand, we aspire for connection. We want to come out of this quarantine and once again to go back to our previous life. Can you explain this conflict? The thing is that, first of all, I don't think that this period is already the post-coronavirus period. The coronavirus did not end yet. We don't know when will it end. There are going to be many mutations, and they'll go and multiply and appear and disappear, and people will as if get sick again, but it's not again. It's different variations of that same virus. So it will take time until we will go each our own way, we and the virus, meaning. On the other hand, of course, this virus seriously separates us. We are gradually becoming used to not physically being close to each other. I see how people behave in line already in some public places, um, when they go to the supermarket, post office, no one gets too close to anyone else. To the contrary, everyone's trying to keep their distance. Um, this is actually very good on the one hand, because that we practically sat on each other's heads. And it's not good. It didn't give us anything. Maybe it gave us some kind of a false vision or imagination that we're close to each other, if one might say that. But actually, it's clear that it's false, all false and external. Now, today's state is more convenient, and on its background, we can really scrutinize our relationships so that we will feel that really we can be closer to each other, but internally, more social, more connected, but on a different wave. That comes from the heart and not from our muscles, from some external movements of the body. So I see many expressions of this coronavirus interaction between us that is 
positive and healthy. Eventually, it has to show us that we internally have to come closer to one another. And by coming closer to each other, we will find the remedy that we're looking for. So it's a new evolutional phase of the evolvement of our desire. Yeah. So this is what I wanted to ask about. What follows is that if we're looking at the evolution of our desire, then we see that the first stage is characterized by a person's need for a person's basic desires, food, sex, um, security, safety. Then the next phase was a person's desire for wealth. Then the next phase, already fifth, sixth, around the fifth, sixth um, century, is uh, where people wanted power. Of course, this also existed when we lived in caves, but still, it's um, this desire was prevalent in people. Later on, the desire for knowledge that evolved, this is um, the period of uh, Renaissance, Enlightenment, and what era are we, what phase are we in now in the 20th, 21st century? There's a new involvement in our desires, but desires for what? We have practically reached a state where we have nothing with which to fill ourselves in this world. Practically nothing. Our world can't give us any more. We can also fight. We, you know, trying to get a better place and government and power and this and that, but it's not growth. Our growth, our earthly growth, actually came to an end. It can't evolve anymore because practically, everything on this planet we have kind of realized. Of course, there's much more to know about our planet, about life, but this is something that for us is unachievable because we're locked within ourselves. What we can do as human beings living in our world is we can come out into the next level of our existence. But for this, we have to be as one, as a whole. Human beings, meaning, or to some extent. Meaning, once we will be able to come closer to each other internally, willingly, in a way that, or by which we can help each other to ascend, to unite, to connect into one whole. Once we will be able to act in this direction, immediately we will start feeling the integrality of our world and it will become revealed in all of us. And we will start existing, or we will start feeling ourselves as existing on the next level in nature. But what will man get pleasure from? By revealing higher and higher, the higher and higher levels in nature. And this will fulfill him. Abstractly speaking, what are these higher levels in nature? This is pleasure that comes from experiencing the integrality of nature, from experiencing the interconnections in nature. It's a pleasure that comes from feeling how different opposite the qualities, of the, um, how opposite qualities in each in nature complete supplement one another. Say two people, someone has basic desires for family, sex, uh, uh, food, things like that, and another one receives pleasure from knowledge 
that she can sit in this laboratory all day long and research some kind of bug or invent some vaccine or something and this fulfills and this the difference yeah but each in his own realm according to how he was created obviously each of us um, is engaged in what nature pushes him toward but from them of their on we will find the whole incomplete between us in a way that we will see how each on his own level, how we discover the integral force of nature, the general force of nature called creator. And in attaining this general force that is revealed in its most multifaceted variations, but along with it, it is all one whole. This is the source of the highest pleasure. On this course, we're talking about only the social aspects of humanity. So what I'd like to ask is, in the past 20 years, the family started falling apart. Today, family is only one of the options in developed European countries. Many, many people live on their own alone as singles and the idea is that nature through the coronavirus has confined us to our homes to be with our families if we had one if we have one so what does it mean that nature is bringing us back to family life or what exactly Nature is forcing us to unite, to come together, in a good way, the right way, where we willingly understand the need for it, that we are all one whole, called Adam, our entire humanity, all of mankind, the 8 billion people, are all in all one organism called Adam. Or we will aspire and yearn to unite consciously in order to complete and supplement each other up to the point of Adam of this kind of interaction between us. Or unwillingly, against our own will, we will come to this, realizing this uh, through how nature is doing it now, pushing us toward it like with the coronavirus today. So can we say that in the family we can learn how to behave with one another, how to interact with each other in the family, and from there on we can learn how to behave with other people too. Well, family is something very basic. Uh, animals also, to some extent, have a family, and human society, it is also something very interesting, continuous, in terms of time and in the multiplicity of its functions. But from there on, from, from the family and on, has to develop society in our time, since society is not developing in the right direction for the sake of achieving the level of the Creator, meaning that's above our own level, meaning rising to the following degree of inhumanity. Therefore, this degree is also disintegrating on the human level. And therefore, the level of the family in our times is decreasing. From statistics, we see that there are many conflicts, in families, I don't think that today man can learn something if we're looking at the interactions that he has in the family, to the contrary, maybe. Uh, it's so, but again, 
It is because there is no purpose. What does the family exist for? In order for the husband and wife to work from morning till evening, all day long, someplace in the evening they come home, do something with the children, arrange some kind of dinner for themselves if they can. They make something artificial in the microwave oven and go to sleep. This doesn't unite the family. There's nothing that unites them. Children, ch children, they're like a burden. You have to take them to kindergarten, then to school, and that's it. You barely see them. So life is created in such a way in order to separate us. So life, work, society are such that they destroy the family. We'll have a separate talk on this subject, but now we'd like to talk about consumption, our desires, we have to constantly fulfill them, satisfy them. And many times I heard you say that when the quarantine will end, uh, people will lose their need for different fulfillments and uh, like shopping and so on. But we see that once the quarantine is you know, there, there are different, it's much less, um, people are already going out. You see that once we, we finish the first wave of the coronavirus, people are going out, shopping, sitting in different places, doing different things. What's so bad about that? I don't see it as good or bad. I evaluate everything according to the goal that man has to achieve and society as a whole. Therefore, I can't say that we are acting correctly or that we're behaving correctly. I think that nature will have to correct us. Nature will have to direct us correctly toward the goal for the correct goal of development. And it's not about sitting in coffee shops, bars. It's not running around shopping. It's not about that. But it is really in order for a person to really be able to work on himself, so to speak. It's when we together learn how we suppose to come closer to each other internally and to create one single system out of ourselves since the entire nature around us, still vegetative, animate, see space, how everything there is interconnected so much so that we can't even imagine, that we don't even understand. And we have to understand that we too have to be interconnected in this system and not to look at it from the side like some superior creatures or something. Therefore, we necessarily have to find out what is going on with us, what does nature want from us. And it wants complete unification and connection between us for all of us to be as one man and one heart. And that in that we will be connected with the still vegetative and animate and we will add the human level and the uh, still vegetative and animate levels in human beings that will add this to that and will all together be one interconnected system. Going back to the evolution of our desires, if we look at how our desires have developed, then somewhere in the middle of the previous century, more or less all scientific revelations um, came, kind of came to an end. We, we revealed all the basic stuff. Lately, we're not revealing anything seriously new. And what developed up until now is the desire to wealth, for wealth. Again, the cycle kind of began. Does it mean that the next level of our development will be for power? for dominion, 
and then again there will be the involvement of the desire toward knowledge or it's not a cycle it doesn't develop in this as a cycle or I don't think that it will repeat itself I really hope that this will not happen I hope that we will start developing according to the next level of the cycle where we will yearn to acknowledge that which is pulling us forward, where we will want to attain, achieve the general law of nature. And we will see this law as the law as a universal, the universal law. Nature wants for us to attain it in its current realm and also the realm of nature which is right now hidden from us. I think that the way these actions that nature, the measures that nature is taking, so to speak, against us, like the coronavirus and other problems that will have a global character that will influence, impact all of humanity, these will be problems with uh, hurricanes, droughts, this, these will be different problems like locus and global problems where humanity will not be will won't have the time to deal with who's in power but it'll have to deal with how to survive we see how a small coronavirus came and what did it do nothing that bad who did it really affect well a very small percentage of the population died much less than would have than it would have been uh, were we to run around going to work doing things and uh, car accidents and so on and so forth so you can't say that the coronavirus was a real threat to humanity to wipe it out and uh, mainly the people that died as a result of the coronavirus, they were uh, old people. So compared to the young people that usually die in car accidents on the roads, so we can't really say that what happened here was something totally horrific and threatening. But look how it changed the world. Look how it changed the character of society, forcing everyone to sit at home, how people came down, how the climate changed a bit, water is cleaner, air is cleaner, because for a month or two, a person stopped interfering to the extent that he used to in nature. So we see how necessary it is for nature. For us, to simply stop uh, shoving our filthy hell hands into its structure. Yeah, uh, some irrational decisions were taken by different governments, and also besides the globality of the problem, because problems always existed in ancient times, or uh, earlier. But what happened here is that uh, the more developed an organism is, the more uh, sensitive it becomes. Now, the tiniest blow, we feel it as something very powerful. You know, just sitting at home, a person feels it like such a strong blow. We're here for a month already. We're going crazy. Uh, previously, People used to live in their village with the 100 people that they saw all their life and never left the village, never traveled anywhere. So the connection between egoism and our desires, we're talking about the development of the desire. So what's the connection between the egoism and desires? Desires. 
You yourself said that people for generations lived in the boundaries of their small village. And this how they lived their life? Nothing bad happened to them? Today, living in some big city, it's not enough for a person. He hops in a plane. And in a year, maybe he flies to different countries, continents, travels around many times. Meaning, everything has to change. Why? What's going on with people? This is because the desires are changing. His desires are growing. So, today, too, you can talk to a person that lives in some big city and he says, why do I have to go someplace? I have everything here. But on the other hand, you can talk to someone living in a village and he'll tell you, I traveled half the world. Egoism comes from the Latin word ego, which means I, which... Um, is a person's behavior that is completely determined by a person putting his own interests above the interests of other people. Absolutely. Yeah. So the question is, on your shows you say that a person flies, uh, people are engaged in art, music. This isn't considered egoism. How can I harm others if I do these things? If this is what I'm engaged in, why should these things vanish? What's bad about that? No, here we're going into a completely different realm. The thing is, what is man meant for from the point of view of nature, the system of nature? Is he carrying out his function and so on? It could seem to him that he is a normal person that didn't do anything bad throughout his life, but really, uh, he does very bad things to nature altogether. It's like some small bolt in a machine uh, that uh, doesn't really do much, but the entire machine doesn't move because of it. So he can say, what do you want from me? But really, his importance in that machine is such that the entire machine could be unfunctional because of that small bolt. So, any person living in this world brings nature some kind of harm? Undoubtedly, because we're all in an integral system. All of nature is absolute. It is integral. All of its parts are interconnected. Each of these parts has its own program, its own goal, that is a part of the general program and general uh, in nature as a whole that all together move as a very complex machine and this entire mechanism of nature takes into into consideration the participation of each and every one of us suppose some person in some place in south america that doesn't uh, drill for oil that uh, what what harm could that person do he is an integral part of humanity as a small bolt he has to learn how does he have to act in order to be interconnected with all of humanity and carry out his function? If he does not carry out this function, then he brings harm. Well, we'll talk about this. The next question from a viewer, getting pleasure from connection to us doesn't really seem appealing. Why? According to the Pyramid of Desires, it should be to the contrary. When you're talking on your shows, you're saying that everyone will sit in circles, interact. It all seems like, you know, uh, he brings this example in the jokes about hell and heaven, that in hell everything's cool and in heaven everything is very phlegmatic, kind of, too calm so to speak, spiritual. Why so? Uh, this is not how we envision heaven and hell. 
Heaven is when humanity unites and attains the great one unifying force of nature called the Shekhinah. As it says that the righteous enjoy this force, meaning that the righteous, they sit on a low kind of like bench between them, connected and enjoy the radiance of the unity, wholeness and completeness of nature. This is the highest degree of pleasure that humanity can experience. So this is exactly the question. People hear what we said. I don't think that they'll start breaking the door in order to get there because you told us about a pleasure that... No, look, dear, I'm not trying to drag anyone or propagate anything. People can live and enjoy what they have. But... At least I want to express uh, the point of view of truth that a person can attain in this lifetime. This is something that he has to attain. He can do it. It is in his ability. And this is what I'm offering. So, everything is within the frame of... This is what we exist for. Did uh, nature make it on purpose that these things are not appealing to us? Of course, on purpose that we'll come to this consciously, that we'll ask for it, that we'll put in our efforts in order to reveal the truth. And not some tiny, pleasant, how to say, uh, excitements. Thank you very much. Our time's up. Until our next meeting, all the best to you too.